Hello friends, it is Tom and today I'm going to do a little comparison on battery powered PA speakers. I have the EV Everse 8, the JBL Eon 1 Compact and the Bose S1 Pro Plus in front of me and I'm going to go over what each of them can do, features that they share and then the features that they don't share. I reckon I'm going to start this off by touching on where they are all the same. As you can see, very similar form factor, you've got this traditional PA speaker shape at the front and they all wedge at the back. They've all got their mixers situated on the back right, which includes the mixer and the input and output section. They are all battery powered. They all can have their battery swapped. However, this requires a screwdriver. These two are toolless battery swaps. They all have effects. This is a little bit different though. The Bose just has reverb. The Everse actually has about 30 effects. They're all kind of combinations. So you've got reverb and then say reverb delay, reverb chorus, doubling, that kind of thing. But you can only use one at a time. And the Compact has a chorus, a reverb and a delay, but you can use all three at the same time. All three of these can stream Bluetooth in what's called true wireless stereo. So you can set two S1 Pro Pluses or two Compacts or two Everse 8s up and you can stream your Bluetooth and have it actually come out in stereo with them connected via Bluetooth. However, the Compact can actually do two pairs of stereo or four in mono. So when it comes to kind of expanding the system, the Compact can do more so than the Pro Plus and the Everse 8. And they can all be pole mounted from the bottom. I guess a question to answer would be, why do you need a battery powered PA? For the price of these, you can buy a PA which is much larger and has a much higher output. However, there is definitely a lot of pluses to using something that is battery powered. Namely that it's portable. You can use it outdoors. You can use it somewhere where you might not have easy access to mains power and you can sit, set it up and let it run. Things like celebrants, buskers, fitness instructors, even things like school sports days, very handy to have something like this on hand because you can use it essentially anywhere. And they do all have a decent battery life going from 11 to 12 hours and down to nine if you're using it at max output. So there is definitely a market for these and there is definitely plenty of use cases where these would be much handier than your traditional large box PA. All right, so I'm gonna start with the Eon One Compact. Look at that, whoa. <laughs> So you've seen the front end, we'll have a look at the back end. <laughs> so we can see we've got our input section here. So we've got two combo inputs, so that's mic or line. You've got a line input, there's an aux input here which shares a channel with the Bluetooth, so you have one or the other. And then you have a pass through which sends the whole mix out through a quarter inch cable. And then down here we have our IAC socket for the power. I'll spin it around a bit more and we get to the mixer section. So. What you have here is a channel select, which allows you to surprisingly select which channel you're gonna be uh, manipulating. You've got a line or mic input, which pertains to the first two inputs, as well as the phantom power. So if you wanna use a condenser mic with this, you can. Uh, and then you've got ducking, which is not really attached to any particular channel. You just turn that on and off. What ducking does is if you're playing music through the Bluetooth channel and you have a mic plugged in, when you speak into the microphone, the music will be lowered automatically. So really, really handy for once again, celebrants, fitness instructors, anyone who wants to have a backing track playing, but they're not playing music themselves, just something to talk over. So a very handy feature to have. So this channel select, what I'm doing now is I've got my channel one highlighted and these four pots here, they control the gain, treble, bass, and reverb send for that channel, for channel one. As I click that, you'll see that channel two lights up. I'm now doing that for channel two, channel three, channel four, so on. And then when I click it again, you'll see they all light up and this gives me my main mix of view. So I now have control of the gain of all four channels. This allows you to tune each channel individually and then once you're ready to play live, you can chuck it into that main view mode and now I can control the volume of all my separate channels without having to cycle through them. So it's a very handy feature that they've thrown in. The battery compartment is actually on the back and this is what I mean by the toolless battery swap. This little kind of semicircle, I can pull it up here and I can undo it with my hands. Or if some gronk has come and timed it too hard, I still can use a screwdriver or a coin or a butter knife to undo it. 
if I find myself unable to do it with my fingers, but it's very quick and easy to take a battery out and chuck it back in. And you can hot swap, you can have power in this and take a battery out and put a new one in and it'll keep running. So that's pretty nifty to have. As far as battery life goes, you can expect it to last for up to 12 hours. And that number obviously goes down if you're pushing it more and more. I believe it's about six to eight hours on max volume. So you still get a fair bit of runtime when you have that hog fully cranked. <laughs> the three PAs that I'm reviewing today do have their own app control. When you connect the E1 Compact to the Pro Connect app, you get access to a lot more functionality that you don't get from the mixer alone. Things like the multi-band parametric EQs on both the channels and the master output. You get access to the other effects sends in there, so you delay in your chorus, not just your reverb. And then you can do things like save snapshots. And because it's Pro Connect, it integrates with the Eon 700, Eon 1 Mark II, PRX1, PRX900 products as well. And it allows you to connect up to 10 devices to the one phone so you can incorporate this e one compact with your other pro connect products in a whole modular kind of system setup that definitely gives it a big leg up compared to the everse 8 and the s1 pro plus now that i have it facing this way again i can see that i forgot to mention these two usb ports on the back you can use those to charge your phone and other devices like that but there is an optional 9 volt or 12 volt DC cable that you can use to power wireless systems such as the AKG DMS systems or a guitar pedal, a looper, even a small synth, basically anything that takes 9 to 12 volts, you can power it using those USB ports. So you can kind of have an all-in-one enclosed system without having any cables running between you and the speaker or the speaker and the wall. So pretty nifty to have. Another feature that the Compact has that the other two don't is that there's actually a slot for an iPad here on the top. Now this is going to be really handy for anyone who needs to read lyrics or read their speech or anything, say a celebrant or a busker. Or if you take it camping, you've got kids, you can put an iPad in there and then you have your own little home cinema system right there in the bush. So another pretty handy feature that JBL have thrown in. It's a nice touch. I'm here for it. There is also... I just keep, there's just so many things in this thing. Uh, there is a headphone output as well. And when you use that, it will disengage the main speaker so you can practice with the Earwan Compact, have it late at night and the sound will just come through your headphones and you won't annoy anyone with your practicing. So once again, another pretty handy feature that JBL have thrown in. All right, next come of the rank is the EV Everse 8. As we flip it around, you'll be hit with a familiar sight, the mixer on the back panel here and the inputs. A little bit different to the Compact. We've got our two combo inputs. We've got our AUX input, which once again, like the Compact, uh, shares the channel with Bluetooth, so you can have one or the other. And then you've got a foot switch control and a mix out. The difference between this mix out is that it's an XLR output compared to the Compact, which is just a line out. And down here we have our power and our power switch. The big difference between the back panel of the Compact and this is that you actually have an LCD screen here. So you do get access to all the controls and settings within the Everse 8. Uh, there's just a little bit of menu diving to go around. So if I wanna hit some main settings, I can just click in that button when I'm on the main view and I scroll down and I get things like my EQ. There's an orientation as well. So having it kicked back or on a pole, uh, I would assume that this actually changes the EQ of the speaker uh, and they would have some presets in there which optimize it for that position. And then you go further down and you get your sub. So that's your crossover essentially. The compact has the same where you can choose it to send only sub 100, 120 hertz through the mix output. So if you are combining this with the sub, you can just throw that out to the sub and you'll have a nice crossover. You won't have frequencies conflicting between the two speakers. And then we keep going down, there's more controls, your FX sends, your FX type, your feedback suppression, mix out, Bluetooth, the LED, the display, pretty much all the things you'd expect on your main menu. Then if I click a channel and click it again, I get the channel uh, presets, the channel controls. Their EQ presets are a little bit different to the Compact. The Compact has a kind of more situational presets. You have things like flat, DJ, cafe, karaoke TV. So these EQ presets are geared more towards music performance, towards buskers, a little less towards kind of your install and non-music situations, as I mentioned earlier, like your celebrant and your sports instructor. You've also got a USB-C output for charging your device or a wireless system. 
and there's also a DC 12 volt output. It looks like you need to have a cable which has uh, the pin on both ends, and then you can power, like the compact, a wireless system uh, or anything that takes a 12 volt output. All right, cool, I think that's it for this one. Oh, no, there is not, wait, wait, wait. As for the battery compartment, it's actually on the bottom here, but like the Eon, it is toolless. It has two of those kind of hybrid flathead, uh, I don't even know what to call this. Just, I guess, like, finger spinner. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go with that. So you can swap the battery without using a tool. I would consider this to be in a bit more of an annoying position compared to the compact because you have to get underneath it to swap the battery out. Uh, especially if you have it pole mounted, you're gonna be kind of behind there trying to undo things. Or if you have it on the ground or God forbid kicked back, it's gonna be even more annoying because you actually have to lift up the speaker to get to the battery, uh, which can kind of be disruptive if you're doing it mid performance. So let's move on to the Bose. All right, so the S1 Compact, sorry, S1 Compact, now I'm making, making speakers up. The Bose S1 Pro Plus, if we have a look around the back, this is probably the most simplistic out of the three. Uh, you just have your two combo inputs. You've got your uh, aux input, which is both quarter inch or 3.5 mil and Bluetooth. So you got one or the other or the other. Uh, and then you have your line out once again, like the Everse 8, it is a mic line out. And then you have your power port, your power button. And there are two different USB rails here. Once again, for charging phones and devices, but also if you have the right cable for charging wireless systems uh, and things like that. So if I flip it around a bit more, we can see our kind of mixer control section. I've got my three channels here. There is no master output like the Everse 8 and the E1 Compact. I wouldn't consider that a deal breaker, but I do think it's an interesting decision. From here, I can control my volume of each of my channels. And I do like this little LCD screen. It's pretty slick. Uh, and it gives me a little bit of information. Like I can see that I have this one set to instrument because it's a teeny tiny guitar. And I've got this one set to microphone because it's a teeny tiny microphone. Now I can click the knob in and it will let me control the treble, bass, and reverb send for this individual channel. And then if I want a little bit more control, I can hold and it'll bring me to your tone match. This is very similar to the EQ that the Everse 8 has. They have a lot of EQ specified to more kind of instruments and microphones rather than situations. Once again, this is geared far more towards music performance than any kind of speech or, or personal address because those the presets don't match in that way. But handy to have if you are a performer. Now, we have done this video before. My predecessor, Andy. Hey everyone, Andy back again. Made a video comparing the uh, previous version previous version, previous version of the Bose S1. And we had a section in there where we set up a mic and we played music to it. Um, personally, I think that's not a great way to showcase the sound of a product just because there's a lot of variables like what microphone are we using, what headphones are you using, how you're listening to it, etc. However, I did have a little listen to the three of them in the, using the same song. And I'll just offer you my opinion. I do recommend that you go into a store and have a listen yourself because pretty much every music store worth its weight in salt will be displaying these and you have a listen. But my take is the S1 is probably the most party box like. It has a very scoop sound. That is to say it has high bass and high treble, not much in the mids. Good for indoor use. As soon as you took it outside, you probably would lose intelligibility in, in any kind of vocal range. And because it only has those very minor EQ settings, you don't have much play with the sound. So once again, pretty scooped, party box like, okay. The Everse 8 is the loudest of the three uh, by a long shot. It has good clarity, but it is pretty gutless in the low end. It only goes down to 50 Hertz at negative 10. So don't expect much bass out of the Everse. So if you're gonna be using it to play bass heavy music, I would suggest not to. The Compact is probably the flattest of the three. It has a good bass, it has a good mid range and high end, and it has probably the most uh, in depth EQ. So you can EQ it and shape it a lot more than the other two. So this one, good for parties, good for indoors. Everse 8, great for say acoustic music and for speech just because it does have that output and it does, doesn't have great low end. And the JBL is pretty much good uh, across the board. It is a bit of a jack of all trades. Price wise, it goes compact, which uh, as of the making of this video, it's about $7.99 Australian dollars. 
Then it goes the S1 Pro Plus, which is about $850, $899, so $50 to $100 more expensive. And the Everse is actually $1,200, so you're paying a lot more for something that essentially does the same as more affordable counterparts. Like I said earlier, definitely get into a store and check it out for yourself because sound is subjective. You need to have a listen to all three to pick which one you think sounds the best. But as I said, for me, Air One Compact, just because I have the most processing, uh, the highest quality processing, and that Pro Connect app is a big linchpin as well because you can integrate it with other JBL products. Something you can't do with the S1 Pro Plus or the Everse 8. I'll just give you guys a quick look at what the different apps look like so you can have a look at that too because it is pretty important app control being a pretty uh, you know widespread thing these days we'll start with the Bose oh there we go couldn't load house curve you're a house curve all right so you can see here as I've connected uh, I have my access to my trouble tra trouble I can sit there and I can choose my bass treble and reverb sends as well as my volume I can mute the channels uh, and then I can turn on my tone match to go off for the microphone or the instrument. If I hit my settings here, this is where I can access my dual wireless function and then also the tone match. And you can see here uh, the different kind of uh, settings they have, more so for instruments than situations like I said. Uh, but they've got a lot here. You've got a lot of different brands of guitars and stuff and then even some utilities. So if you need to be using it with something else, like a sub, you can get in there and do that for that channel. We'll go to the Everse. This is the Everse. I find this one a bit more confusing than the others, but uh, I've got my bass, mid and treble for my master output and my volume. If I click edit mixer, I can choose my channels and you can see here I have my volume and then the different effects and compressor, my three band EQ, my FX, which I've set to doubling at the moment, my ducker, and then I can use this big slider here to do my main level. And then you've got some EQ presets here. Uh, once again, more in instrument and microphone kind of centric rather than situational. This is how I kind of get to everything. I've got my different effects uh, scrolling through them here. As I said before, they are just a lot of them are just combos like reverb chorus, or reverb delay, but that's how you can access it. Yeah, Everse app, pretty good. A little bit confusing to get your head around, but it's because it's a fairly simple product. You don't have to uh, spend too much time to get your head around it. Last one we'll look at is the JBL Pro Connect. The JBL Pro Connect, uh, if I click on my Air One Compact, as you can see down here, I have my master volume. Uh, I have my individual channel volumes and I can change them from mic to line. I have all the effects sends and everything like that. And then I can go into say the ducking and I can change the ducking uh, all the, the kind of settings for it. This is definitely the most involved or the deepest ducking settings uh, compared to the ducking on the Everse 8. Uh, and then I can have a look at the EQ. So this, this is the master EQ. Uh, I've got the eight parametric bands here uh, and I can really fine tune it. You can see I've got my gain width and frequency uh, and then there's also presets as well. As I mentioned, the other two, their presets are more instrument centric. These are situational. So I've got speech, I've got karaoke and TV, DJ, cafe, brighter, darker, uh, and then you've got a custom one as well that you can load yourself. And then this is where I would connect with the other Pro Connect family members as well to combine the compact with my Aeon 700 or PRX1 or any of those uh, products. From that, you can probably see that the Bose is easiest because it's just very simple, but you get access to a lot of DSP from the Air One Compact by using the app. And that's another reason why I would pick the Compact over these other two, just because the app is very, very comprehensive, very easy to use, and I get access to all that DSP that's built into it. So who would these be best for? The S1 Pro Plus, definitely uh, more ideal for DJs who want something that's just very easy to use, very simple, as well as people who don't have a great idea on uh, how to use PAs and don't really care much about shaping the sound or having tonal control, I'll go for the S1 Pro Plus. The Everse 8, because it is pretty weak in the low end, more inclined for acoustic and speech, and then also the feedback suppression and ducking comes into it. The Air One Compact, would be the main winner for me because it can do what these can do 
uh, as well as some things that they can't. Very, very handy for celebrants, for sports days, for sports instructors, having that feedback suppression by DBX, having that ducking that you can have a lot of control over, and the fact that you can swap the battery from the back. If you wanna charge the battery of these two, you need to actually keep them in the unit and plug it in. But with the compact, you can buy a spare battery, you can have that dual battery charger and have one battery charging while the other one is being used. This is another really handy thing. They also do come with bags and covers for all of them. And one thing that the EV has that these two don't is there's actually a plastic cover that goes over the mixer, which makes it IP45 rated. This makes it resistant to water, light rain and splashes. So for a place like a pool or a spa where there's a lot of moisture in the air, you probably wanna go with this one just because you can cover it up and it'll last a bit longer than these two with that moisture. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Am I on the money? Am I completely wrong? Uh, I really enjoy the amount of discussion that these PA videos bring and I'll catch you next time.